Thank you. Who were the Despoisini? I, I'm trying here. And do you think they may have formed a dynasty in the early Jerusalem church? How do you it spell would, it? Huh? How do you spell the word? D-E-S-P-O-S-Y-N-I. Despoisini? It would beat returning to Galilee and resuming a subsidence lifestyle. What do you think happened to them during the Jewish War 66 to 70? So it's this idea of a... They formed a dynasty in the early Jerusalem church? Disposini, uh, I know. <laughs> I, have no idea. I, don't, I don't know what that word means, disposini. It sounds like a Greek word. DYS would mean bad. Posini, posse, posse. I don't, I don't know. What, I don't know what the person's referring to. Maybe um, one day we'll come back to it. Uh, what are the Codex Fuldensis and San, San Galensis, 1395, and what importance do they have for scholars? What? Am I my PhD exams here? <laughs> what? <laughs> I know, I know. Do you okay. do you have a rec any recollection of these particular? You know, I know full dance. I, I should know Sangalensis because I think I used it in my dissertation <laughs> forty five years ago. Um, full dance is an important Latin manuscript that is a um, uh, it's a, a gospel harmony that some people think is dependent on um, Tatian's diatessaron, uh, or that somehow it's related to the diatessaron, or more likely it's just another case where, uh, so a, a, a harmony is where you take the four gospels and you take the stories in each one and you combine them all so that you end up with one big gospel. Um, that's what the diatessaron was done by Tatian in the second century. And it was, um, he, he was a Syriac uh, Christian who studied with Justin Martyr in the uh, middle of the second century in Rome. And uh, he made this diatessaron. It's not clear if he did it, what language he did it in, if he did it in Greek or if he did it in Syriac. But it became, it got translated in Syriac or written in it, and it became the standard version of the Gospels in Syria for centuries. So they didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They had this thing. And Codex Fodensis is kind of like that. It's a, it looks like it's a, a Latin version of a, of a gospel harmony of some kind. Um, so that's that's what that is. Sangalensis. I'm drawing a blank. Sorry. Uh, no biggie. No biggie. It says what is Codex the Codex Clara Montanus, and what is it its importance to scholars studying the Western type text? Okay. So. Um, Codex Clermontanus is uh, what people call Codex D. Um, it is a uh, fifth century text. It's, it's one of the most studied texts of, uh, uh, the, of Greek, Greek New Testament scholars because it's fairly early. It's one of our earliest texts. It's one of our most complete texts, and it's one of our most bizarre texts. It is a Greek Latin um, Book. So it's it's a diglot. It's got a Greek on one side of the page and Latin on the other side of the page, and it's so it has the four Gospels and Act, and Acts, and um, and so you have you know you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts in in two columns, and it's a bizarre manuscript because it has a lot of um, textual readings. It has lots of ways of wording verses that is completely different. From other manuscripts <laughs> and so um the big question has been historically is it just aberrant uh by an aberrant scribe or is it standing in an ancient uh tradition that is aberrant or is it standing in an ancient tradition that in fact shows that every all these other manuscripts are aberrant <laughs> wow. and so uh and it has some really interesting textual variants uh in it uh, it has been much written about by their scholars have written entire books on it, uh, a number of really important books on it um, that deal with various aspects of it, including, for example, a classic work by Eldon Epp that tried to show that in the book of Acts, at least, the manuscript is, has an anti-Jewish bias, for example. Wow. Thank you for that. What is the Johannine comma and when did it first appear in a manuscript? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so in, uh, in grammatical terms, a comma is not just a punctuation mark. Our punctuation mark 
the, our comma, the punctuation mark in English, separates off a, a kind of a sense unit that is shorter than a sentence, for example. Um, or so, it's, it's, it's shorter than something you'd use a semicolon for. Okay, so in Greek, when they talk about a comma or a colon, they're not talking about the punctuation mark, they're talking about the sense unit. Like, uh, so if I have a phrase, for example, um, you know, uh, whatever phrase. So the Johannine comma is a unit of text in 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Um, it is the passage that is the only passage in any of our manuscripts of the New Testament that appears to, uh, to affirm explicitly the doctrine of the Trinity. In 1 John chapter 5, um, the author of 1 John, whoever he was, says in the context of a discussion that there are three that bear witness, the Father, let's say, the Father, the water, and the blood. Okay, he's just talked about how about Jesus attests to the water and the blood. It may be a reference to in the Gospel of John when his side is pierced, water and blood come out. And so he says the water and the blood bear witness. And so first John is saying there are three that bear witness, the father, the water and the blood. And that's what it says in almost all the Greek manuscripts. When Erasmus produced his first edition of the Greek New Testament in 1516. It was the first time anybody had printed a copy of the New Testament on a printing press, as opposed to somebody writing it out by hand. When you write it out by hand, it's a manuscript. When you do it on, a print, on the printing press, then it's a printed text. Erasmus was, didn't have very many manuscripts to base his text on, and he printed 1 John chapter 5, without those, with, just with those words. There are three of the bear witness, the Father, the, uh, the, the water, and the blood. In the Latin tradition, uh, in the Latin Bible, in the manuscripts, the thousands and thousands of Latin manuscripts, and in the Latin printed Bible, the, the Bible that had been used in the Western church, the Roman church for centuries and centuries, had an additional line. There are three of the bear witness, um, in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Father, the, the blood, and the water, and the blood. So this phrase, there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, and these three are one, that's the Johannine comma. And it's a, it was a controversial issue because Erasmus, in the first Greek version didn't include it because it wasn't in his Greek manuscript. But many, many, many people objected on the grounds that Erasmus had eliminated the Trinity from the New Testament. And Erasmus pointed out, it's not in the Greek manuscripts. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they finally found some manuscripts that uh, incorporated, that they found that was actually from about the time that he was he was doing his editions, somebody was copying out the Greek manuscript and included it in Greek. And he ended up including it in a later edition of his Greek the printed edition of his Greek New Testament. And that later printed that later printed edition of Erasmus's New Testament uh, was the basis, ultimately the basis for the King James version of the New Testament. And so that phrase, the Johannine Common, will be found in the King James version and in uh, conservative evangelical versions that will include it even though textual scholars are unanimous. This baby did not belong there. His was added. <laughs> and so, yeah.